Hi, my friends, and welcome to the ultimate Bible adventure. Today's episode, The Bible Detective, where we are going to prove the stories in the Bible really happened, digging up Bible stories, my friends, one story at a time. And here's the host of our program, David Diggers. Well, hi guys, I sure hope we'll have fun. Just the other day, I was sharing with my friend's dad the story I learned in Sunday school, and I believed that story. I even showed him, and this is what he what said. What are you talking about? You can't prove those Bible stories are real. Ooh, I didn't know what to say to him. But I got on my unicycle and I went right to church. And I went into the library and I learnt and learnt and learnt and studied and studied and studied. And now I know I can show people why I believe what I believe and I want to share it with you. It's stuff, all kinds of things they found to prove that the stories in the Bible happen, just like the Bible says. And it happened long, 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 long time ago, and in a different country, the country of Israel. Now, my friends, God told prophets to write down the stories that were happening in the Bible, and I just found out at the church library and in Sunday school where I learned and learned and learned that there's all kinds of stuff, things that they found to show that those Bible stories really happen. Now, I'm going to go back to the theater workshop because I want to show you lots of that stuff. Woo! Hi, guys. Well, let's be quiet now. We're going to get started. Well, I want to share with you all the wonderful stuff that I found proving that the Bible stories really happen. Everybody knows about King David. King David was the guy who fought Goliath the giant. Well, now we know there was a guy named David because of the Bible. And we found a stone, a rock, with King David's name written right on it. And the Bible says he put down that big giant Goliath, and I believe it. Well, today that rock is in a museum, and it shows that there was a guy named David. It's called David's Kingdom. My friend, that rock goes back to David's days. Well, he did fight a giant just like this big giant. Whoo! This guy is huge. He's larger than your door, almost higher than your ceiling. I wonder how much soap that guy used to wash that big body. Well, I believe the story of David because now we have a rock to prove it. And giants? Well, there was a giant man, Mr. Wadlow. He only lived years ago. And right now, you can go to Niagara Falls, Ontario, and you can see for yourself a statue there because I went there with my friends and we saw a giant. His name was Mr. Wadlow. Now, boys and girls, they also found all kinds of skeletons of giants, just like the Bible says. And they're in museums today. Now, long, long, long before the flood of Noah, the Bible says there were giants that lived on the earth, just like Goliath. Now, look at the size of that thumb bone. Whoa, that's huge. That man must have had a very easy time with a thumb like that to clean his nose. Well, my friends, I believe in David and Goliath. I believe there were giants that lived on the earth. And I believe the story of Noah's flood, just like the, oh, oh, my belly, look, I'm tossing and rocking back and forth. Oh, look at this, I almost feel like I'm on Noah's Ark being tossed to and fro. Oh, I believe those stories. Oh, yes, sirree. God did tell Noah to build an ark, and he put the animals on the ark, and there was a flood. The Bible tells us that Noah's Ark landed on a mountain called Ararat. Can you say that word? Ararat. Well, that's the mountain of Ararat right here and now. And I believe that Ron Wyatt, see, 
He was an archaeologist. Can you say that big word? Archaeologist. That's a guy who goes to look for all the stuff, all the things that can help prove that the Bible is real. Well, look at the pictures that he took on the mountains of Ararat. Well, my friends, that sure looks like a boat to me. And there were all kinds of wood, old, old, old wood, all around the shape of what looks to me like a boat. Well, you can see all that stuff at ronwyatt.com. Or if you want to, you can go see the creation research team. And near that boat, they found all kinds of nails and rivets and bolts and all kinds of metal things that would only help to keep that boat together. And it did land on the mountain of Ararat, just like the Bible says. Now, another man, he found another place where he thinks that Noah's Ark really is. And they even took pictures. Well, one thing's clear. That mountain is all full of snow, and there's no trees that grow there. And how come they found wood on the mountain of Ararat? Yes, my friends, the Ark of Noah is definitely on that big mountain, the mountain of Ararat. And if somebody says, why do you believe that story of Noah's Ark? You can say this, I believe that story because Jesus believed the story of Noah's Ark. He said that just before he comes back, the people will be acting just like they did in the days of Noah. So Jesus believed the story of Noah's Ark. Do you think Jesus would lie to us? No, you're right. There's no reason for Jesus to be lying to us. Believe it or not. Well, friends, everybody's heard of Robert Ripley's Believe It or Not. Well, he says he found Noah's tomb. He's never been proven wrong. Believe it or not. Everybody into the pool! No, that's Ron Wyatt, my friends, and his scuba diving team. And he went right there in the sea where Pharaoh's army drowned because they followed Moses as he parted the Red Sea. Well, my friends, I had a teacher one time tell me she didn't believe that, that the waters were parted because she said everybody knows there's only two inches of water there at that time of year. I thought, wow, that's wonderful. All of Pharaoh's army drowned in two inches of water. And you see, our friend Ron Wyatt and his team, they believed the Bible. So they went down into the sea to find those.